adding new parts to your system or even updating an existing parts description, pricing or other information and details can be time consuming. If your supplier provides you with a file with all the information that you need, then using the auto part and traders block import routines can save you time, as well as eliminate the chance of information being mistyped during the entry process. So let's run through a basic block import, taking the data from a parts and price file. First of all we're going to database, database entry amendments and then look for the option for block changes. Then on the tab across the top look for the block import option. Firstly we need to select a file that we wish to import. We can either import standard CSV files or XLS files that are produced in Microsoft Excel. In this instance I'm going to import a CSV file. Select the field for the file name then hit search. It's defaulted to the previous folder I did an import from but you can easily navigate through your system. In this case I'm going to go to price files, block import and pick my demonstration file. Comma delimited file is the default. You can save layouts in there which I'll come back to in a little bit. My supplier is going to be BRT. I always take add new parts because I've got some parts on file that I might not have had and update existing parts. This is a bearings file. So any new parts that are going to be added to the system can go into the bearings product group. There are other options available on this screen, but for now we'll leave all the other settings as they are. We then hit the OK button and the screen will update and show you the import field definitions. All we need to do is go down and see what we want to call each field. The left hand side shows what's in the file. The right hand side shows where we're going to put that data on our database. So they all default to emit field and this first one's going to be part number. Supplier part's quite obvious. Product description is just description in the database. Barcode is often put into the known as field, It is on my system. Minimum order quantity. Box quantity. Price unit we won't use. Net purchase price. And retail recommended price. Surcharge. Your surcharge in value. I'm going to omit the last two fields as I don't use them myself. And then what we can do, we can look at what data we're getting by using the validate second record. So we've got part number, description, net purchase price. There's no recommended retail on this particular file. It's all zero. Once all the fields have been mapped, if you hadn't used the validate second record option, you should tick it now before you do the import. This means that the data starts getting read from the second line rather than the line that could be your headings. Then we hit OK. At this point we get a message explaining that new parts will be added to the system. Answer yes. Would you like to save this format? I think we will save it. And we'll call it BRT import. Update now complete. Once the update is complete, the block changes will appear with the proposed changes section. And you'll see several columns. Each field then will be shown as a separate line. So a change to minimum order quantities on one line, change to the box quantities on another, net purchase price on another, and retail recommended price updates are on another. At this point we can do some checks to make sure that the data is what we were expecting to see. Select a line and click on amend in order to see that data. So currently the price is zero, the net purchase price, and these are the prices that are going to be put in by this change. Once you have sanity checked some of the data, you can then finalise the update or delete the import line if you no longer require it. On this occasion, I will just hit OK to complete all of the selected updates. Once the update is completed, we can go into Product and Price File Maintenance and verify that the changes have been made. So we're going to Database, Database Entry Amendments, Product and Price File Maintenance. Enter the part number that was on my file, BRT, BRT1416. Go into Suppliers and Cost Prices, and you can see that the net purchase prices that I imported are now in there. One final thing to do is revisit the Block Import screen.
database, database amendments, block changes, and block import. Earlier, if you recall, we saved out the import template. So we'll select that from here. BRT import is what I called it. Select a file. And you'll notice that it's ticked and set all of the things that we set when we saved the template previously. Select OK. It's also saved the mapping that we selected. This can save considerable time if you get multiple files from the same supplier. Validate second record. Yes, we're going to add new parts. That just about wraps it up for this simple guide to block imports. So thanks for watching. If you require further assistance, please don't hesitate to contact our service desk. If you would like to be kept up to date with the ongoing developments at MAM Software, then please follow us on social media, YouTube and our community portal.